G'day, I'm Paul. So the BMW six cylinder turbo is one of my favorite engines and it was in the Supra that I used to own and I just think it is just a really smooth operator. So that's why here in the BMW M340i, I reckon it's possibly one of the best applications of it because they've now teamed all wheel drive with it. It really just sort of pushes the envelope in terms of delivering maximum performance out of that engine. So the M340i, it's now priced at around $105,000. So they used to have a pure version and a more expensive version. They've now sort of split the difference there and it's kind of in the middle. This competes with things like the Audi S4 and the much more expensive Mercedes AMG C43, which is now four cylinder as well. Today we're gonna to do a detailed review of this car. So if you do wanna skip ahead to other parts of the review, you can use the time codes on the screen. Or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon. That way you can find out every single time we drive a car with an engine that I love. So let's look at exterior design. You've got nine colors to pick from. All but white is gonna set you back $2,000. They are expensive colors and you can get like unique colors that are even more expensive as well. Just on the design front, I really like the look of this. So obviously they've divided a lot of opinion with the big grills in the M3 and the M4. But to me, I just think this design here is peak BMW design, it looks really cool. So you've got your dual kidney grille there with active vanes just behind it. You've got full LED adaptive headlights there with matrix LED. You have radar sensor down the bottom there as well and front and rear parking sensors. So uh, it all looks pretty straightforward down the front here and I think this design just looks great. It looks a bit like a five series as well, which I really like. So this is a great design in my opinion. A whip around to the side here and have a look at these wheels. So it sits on 19 inch alloy wheels. And I love the look of these as well. So machined finish on the outside there, and then on the inside, you've got a piano black finish. This comes standard with the M Sport package, uh, given it's the M340i, so you get big brakes, big rotors, and also M badge just here as well. M on the brakes there with a red finish on the caliper too. It is a fairly low profile tire, and it is worth keeping in mind that that is probably going to affect the ride, uh, but ultimately, I guess it's a bit of a compromise you make. You're gonna have a slightly firmer ride here, but it does have adaptive damping. Now up the top here, you get the cool M wing mirror there as well with that scallop cut out, all piano black with an indicator built into there. Camera on the side there, and then come around to the back with me. This rear looks sensational. So you got a little boot lip spoiler there, full LED tail lights, M340i badge there as well. And then a piano black diffuser down the bottom. Nice meaty set of dual exhaust pipes too. And that's the thing on the design here. I just think it looks really nice and subdued. You've got all the performance punch you need without it looking over the top, which is why I think it's a really great compromise. So let me know what you reckon about the design in the comment section down there. Do you like the look of this? Or do you want to go outrageous with like an M3 with the you know exhaust pipes in the center here? Let me know what you reckon in the comments section below. Okay, so we're inside the M340. We will kick off with the key. So you've got unlock, lock, boot, the little uh, diamond there for activating the lights. And then on the side there, you have the M uh, insignia, a little bit of brushed aluminium as well. It is a proximity sensing key, so you can leave that in your pocket. Once you're inside, you have a push button start just here. Um, look, I, I like this interior. I, I just love this curved screen set up here. I love the fact that they've, they're now rolling this out across the rest of their range. And this interior to me seems very sort of high-end and premium. Um, I guess you can take or leave this brown interior, but the fact that you can kind of get it with all these different options is, is pretty cool. Very limited piano black as well. So it is just a really nice place to be seated. And it kind of follows on with that character of this car being understated. It feels professional in here. It doesn't feel like a boy racer car and you have all of the tools that you need to do your day-to-day your -day job as well. So um, yeah, what about your touch points? So uh, up the top there, that's all nice and soft. Over here, that's soft as well. A little firmer on the door there. How soft is it? We've got our durometer. Tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. What about our build quality? That all feels really nice and solid as well in our door slam test. Yeah, very robust. Okay, let's talk infotainment. So I mentioned earlier that this is the, the brand new whiz-bang setup. So it's a curved display. This side is just under 15 inches. This is 12.3 inches. And I think that iDrive 8 is the step forward that BMW needed. The previous generation of iDrive wasn't amazing in my opinion, whereas this I think really just solves a lot of the functionality issues they had previously. So you have everything in pillars here on the home screen. 
And then you can move them around by just holding and then shifting those around the place. It's all connected to the internet and you would have seen the, the controversy about BMW charging for subscriptions and stuff like that. And um, yeah, that is the case here. You can actually buy features to, to add to your infotainment system as well. You have remote connectivity through your phone that allows you to connect with the car, uh, check its status, remote start the car, lock, unlock, that type of stuff as well. Actually, I'm curious, do you want us to do like a comparison where we compare all of the car's remote sort of phone access systems to see which is best and how quick they respond? Let me know in the comments section below. Uh, on the radio front, you have AM, FM, DAB, digital radio, and that's all plumbed through a 16-speaker Harman Kardon branded sound system. Excellent sound system, really big fan of it, and the fact that it comes standard, I think it is pretty cool as well. You have inbuilt satellite navigation. Again, that's all great, nice and fast and snappy and all that kind of thing. Now, you will notice something interesting here. So later on, when we talk about uh, comfort, I'll talk about dual zone climate control and stuff like that, but there are no buttons here for climate control anymore. You have to do it all through the screen. I don't love that. I think out of all the buttons I probably wanted here, it was probably just a simple up, down on temperature and a fan button. But that's all now buried into here, including your heated seats. You can activate all of that with voice if you need to, but to me, I would have just preferred to have some buttons for that. Uh, you have wireless Apple CarPlay. So big screen there and works nice and fast as well, which is good. This is what Android Auto looks like. It also is wireless, takes up the full screen there, which is good news, nice and snappy as well. So that's great. Um, you also have this screen ahead of the driver here. We'll have a closer look at that when we go for a drive, but you can kind of configure the stuff that appears there uh, using the steering wheel. All very impressive here from a tech perspective. Let's talk about safety. So you have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. You have rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitor built into that wing mirror. You have lane departure warning with a lane keeping assistant. This also has a semi-autonomous driving function, which we'll test a little bit later on. Front and rear cross traffic alert, front and rear parking sensors, and a 360 camera. I'll show you what that looks like. So there it is there. Uh, look, quality is actually not too bad. So you can see what's written there on the suitcase. You have all your guidelines there as well. You can also then do a 3D view, so you can whip around to other parts of the car, see what's going on. But you can see as we get closer to the back there, the suitcase looks kind of like a pancake instead of an actual suitcase. Um, you've got a car wash mode, which lets you look top down so you can get your wheels on the tracks. You also have a reversing assist, and we actually shot a video that explains how that works. If you click up here, you can watch that. Really great feature. It helps you get out of narrow streets and that kind of thing as well. And this is what the horn sounds like. Okay, let's talk about your practicality, and we'll start off with connectivity. If we open our little tray just here, you have wireless phone charging just there, USB A port, a 12 volt outlet. You have a USB C port just inside here as well. In terms of storing your phone, it can live there on the wireless phone charger, or kind of lives inside the cup holders there as well. Now, what about our cup holders? Well, we've got our coffee cup. Look at that, how fancy. Um, we'll see how that fits in here. There we go, no dramas there, sits nice and high. You're not gonna be delittered. We'll try our water bottle as well. <laughs> fits in without any dramas. You've got teeth in there, so uh, it fits in the door too. We'll try our big water bottle inside the door as well. Mm, yeah, it kinda does. You have to cram it in there for that to fit. Not exactly the most convenient. Uh, in terms of other storage, you've got this little slot down here. We also have a glove box over here that is reasonably sized. Okay, comfort features. So we're gonna dive into our climate menu here for dual zone, automatic climate control, seat heating for the first row. You have electric seat adjustments. So you can go forwards, backwards, backrest can go forwards, backwards. You can lift the front of the seat, the back of the seat. Uh, you also have lumbar adjustment. You can also adjust your side support as well. You have seat memory for the driver, electric seat adjustment for the front passenger. Have a look at these seats as well. They look amazing. They're kind of like a work of art. They've got this center section that sits out a little bit and then these air holes on the side with some good bolsters too. Really beautiful looking seat. Uh, steering adjustment, it's manually adjustable and it adjusts for both tilt and reach. And on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving, but you do have to tilt in a little bit to catch the corner there. Okay, second row. It is pretty cramped back here. Um, not a great deal of knee room. Toe room's okay. Um, headroom is pretty tight, but 
you know, it is a three series after all. Um, you have a third zone of climate control just here, two USB-C ports, you get air vents, no map pockets in the back of these seats, but you can pop your drink in the centre console here. You've got two little cup holders in there with rubber teeth as well. The drink bottle can then live inside the door as well. This actually folds down too to give you better access to the boot as well, so that's not too bad. Now, window test. So it's auto up and down. Does it go all the way down? Ha, oh, winner. And finally, ISO fix points on the two outboard seats with three top tether points. Okay, let's chat cargo space. So you have 480 litres available to you, powered tailgate. You have storage off to the sides here with a little first aid kit there and a tyre repair kit. You don't really have access to this underfloor area here that's all sort of closed off. Um, what it looks like with our bags in there, let's give that a crack. This is our laptop. Suitcase as well. So there's actually a fair bit of room in there. You know, so sedans are pretty versatile when they have a big opening area like that. Then you can expand the space a little bit more as well. You've got seat release levers just here, and then you pop your seats out of the way, and that exposes a almost flat load floor. Okay, we've just hit the road in the M340. Gee, this seating position is so low. I'm just used to driving SUVs recently, and this feels like just a completely different beast entirely. Um, you really do sit quite low, which is good. I think it's nice to get away from SUVs for a change. Um, now, in terms of the engine, so three litre turbocharged six cylinder, it's an inline six, makes 285 kilowatts of power and 500 newton metres of torque. That is just the perfect amount for something like this. It's nice and nimble and darty. It is a little bit heavy, it's around 1700 kilos, so, could be lighter, but when you do look at this type of car with this type of engine, I think it is a really nice pairing. So is the gearbox. Eight speed torque converter automatic transmission, so no dual clutch. Means that whenever you lean on the throttle, it's right in that torque band and it just pushes you along really nicely. Now that brings me to the noise. It is such a good sounding engine. So I've turned off the iconic sounds inside the cabin and this is what it sounds like just when you roll onto it in comfort. It's just so nice and smooth, which is awesome. So in terms of the rest of the driving experience, it feels just like a BMW should. It's got heavier than usual steering. You know, it's not anywhere near as light as something like a Mercedes-Benz. So you do get a little bit of feel through the wheel there. It actually feels like stuff is going on. You've got paddle shifters in easy to reach spots. And with the M Sport package, you get this slightly thicker wheel that sits nicely in your hands as well. Everything just works together great. Now, in terms of fuel economy, our BMW claims eight liters per 100 Ks. I'm not even gonna bother showing you our fuel economy here simply because it's just not realistic. We had to shift around filming today and do all of our faster driving and silly driving up first and it's completely blown it out of the water. But you will expect to see around 10 to 11 liters per 100 Ks if you are just sort of pottering around the city and driving normally. The other fascinating thing as well is this has an all-wheel drive system, but it is rear biased. You do still get a lot of input from the front, uh, but you do get that rear biased feel behind the wheel. So when we go for our sportier lap here, I'll be keen to see whether it is actually like that from behind the wheel as well. Okay, time for our sine waves. We're in comfort mode. I'm going to dial this up to 130 k's an hour. Sine waves give us a really good indication of what this feels like with a little bit of pace, such as when you're overtaking. So here we are, comfort, 130, sensational. So you've got adaptive damping underneath the skin, and that means that this is just constantly adjusting how firm the ride needs to be depending on the surface that you're on. And in this particular instance here, it is proving to be spot on to where it needs to be. We are driving this car with big wheels, and the big wheels tend to not be great for ride, but here it is a really good complement between the two. Okay, time to hit up our bumpy road. So this road is representative of like a really bad country road in Australia. So we do this at 90 k's an hour. Just gives us an idea of what the suspension feels like in the comfort setting. Actually feels surprisingly good. We're driving a car with giant wheels and I'm genuinely staggered how well this is riding for, for it being a sporty car. Here's our condensed sine wave. So even here, it's just falling into those divots nicely. Cars with a poor suspension tune tend to just float over those and you just don't really have any control over the car, whereas this is just catching everything it needs to catch and still giving us a really comfortable feel behind the wheel. So that is, that is really impressive. Now, let's go for a bit of a punt. You've got Sport, Comfort and Eco Pro, but in Sport, you've also got 
Sport, Sport Plus and Sport Individual. So let's go Sport Plus. I can instantly feel that become firmer, the steering become heavier. Don't love the brakes, they've got a bit of a wooden feel to them. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling this was going to be under-tired. I think it's on 255s at the rear. And it does help that you've got that front axle helping things out a little bit, but ultimately, I can constantly feel the rear just sort of getting to the point where it wants to let go. So it does show you probably need a stickier set of treads here if you're gonna be seriously going for a drive, but it has some tremendous pace. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This actually feels, certainly around our circuit, which is not really a, a super high speed circuit, but this feels as quick as the M4 that we drove here recently. So for a road car, this is pretty phenomenal stuff. We'll roll onto the back straight here. Gee, it is absolutely piling on speed. That is unreal. Yeah, those brakes definitely need better feel. They pull up okay, but the, the brake pedal feel is just so wooden. You hit this point where it just becomes hard and you just don't get the feedback you're expecting to get from the pedal. But tell you what, I will never grow tired of that sound. That is absolutely unreal. Yep, very nice. Uh, good job, BMW. This is like most of the thrills of an M3. Well, most of the thrills in uh, on a road like this that's representative of an Aussie road. Uh, most of the thrills without the huge price tag. So, yeah, really bloody impressed with this. Now, what about your road noise? Um, look, it's, it's okay, but not amazing, uh, especially if you hit some coarser chip sections of road at highway speeds you do get a fair bit of noise coming into the cabin. That is side effect of a sportier tire with uh, big wheels as well. So that is worth keeping in mind. It's not gonna be totally serene, but you do have massively good sound system to drown everything out. Now let's talk visibility. So I can see clearly down the front of the car there, wing mirrors are on the smaller side, but they give me enough visibility down the side. Visibility out the back is really good as well. So I'm pretty sort of happy with all that. Cameras are great. So when it comes to parking, you've got litany of options there to make parking a straightforward process. And if you are doing any tighter parking, turning circle comes in at 12 metres. Okay, time to do some semi-autonomous function testing. Uh, so the way that we do it, we use the three outer lanes here on the circular track, and we have the speed set at 70 k's an hour, and uh, basically let the car do its own thing. As we get to the outer section of the track, we're relying on the car to apply more steering input, more torque on the wheel, and that is a pretty good indication of how it actually goes out on the normal road when it approaches a tighter corner. So uh, there is 70 k's an hour. We'll change that to assisted driving mode. So you can see it's in its assisted mode because we've got a little steering wheel down there. So that is active now. So in this lane, it's doing a pretty good job. No complaints there, which is good news. We'll jump over to the next lane. All right, wait for that to lock in. Waiting, waiting. There it is, so steering is active. It's holding the center of that lane really nicely. Awesome, all right, let's try our outer lane. This is where most cars struggle. We'll see how well it does up here. Wait for that to activate. Waiting, waiting. Still no green steering wheel. Still nothing. I'll just move around this lane a little bit. There we go, it's locked in now. Gradually let go of that wheel. Oh, that is sensational. That is holding us dead center in that most outer lane. Not many cars will actually do this, which is pretty awesome. It's telling me to put my hands back on the wheel because you're meant to actually keep your hands on the wheel if you're on a normal road. So that is unreal. So that gives you uh, an idea of how good this system is. And uh, if you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before in that same test, have a look at the link in the description below. Okay, let's do a little bit of performance testing. So BMW claims a zero to 100 time of under five seconds. So we'll see how this goes. Um, yeah, we're gonna go through to 120 and then we'll get our zero to 100 and our 80 to 120 as well. I'll use launch control here too. So hard on the brake, hard on the throttle. It'll say launch control active and away we go. It is there. Oh, that is quick. Far out, it's 100. That's 120. Gee, it really pins you back in the seat. 
this is colossally quick. BMW has sorted itself out when it comes to uh, launch control in torque converters. That is bloody impressive. So let's see how it went for the first attempt. Uh, 0 to 100, 4.26 seconds. That is lightning fast. 4.26 seconds, far out. Very impressive. Uh, and then 80 to 120, 2.7 seconds. Like that is also a very quick overtaking figure. I'm going to be so sad when this engine disappears. It is, yeah, it is unreal. Okay, uh, let's see how these wooden feeling brakes feel when we stop from 100 to zero. Okie dokie, let's dial up 100 k's an hour and then we'll hit our marker. She gets up to 100 so quickly. <laughs> Some cars need a massive run up here, so it's our marker just here. Oh, the seatbelts are just... Taken three years off my life. That is very vicious, my goodness. Okay, um, let's see how it went for our 100 to zero stop. Uh, so 2.7 seconds and 37.29 meters. That is bloody impressive. So even though the brake pedal doesn't feel great, it actually pulls up really nicely and quickly there. So uh, there's some good numbers. So if you wanna see how this car compares to others, uh, we actually have a table with all of these results, including our noise road results, down in the uh, description below. So have a squiz at that if you want to see how it compares. Okay, time to see how quick this goes in reverse. So here we go. 43 kilometres an hour. So I mentioned before that it still has a little bit of front bias. I'm keen to see how much it is. So I'm going to put it into uh, Sport Plus, and then we'll switch stability control off. And I'll just dial in second gear here around our cone. Yeah, see, it's interesting because when the back end comes around, it's doing exactly what a rear wheel drive version of this BMW would do. But the second you start putting in too much steering input, it starts feeding lots of torque to the front axle to kind of undo what you're doing. So it would be cool, and I think that's probably why they reserve it for the M3 and stuff, but it would be cool to have a mode that I could get it to just stay in rear wheel drive or, or just keep more of a rear wheel drive bias instead of uh, flicking everything back to the front there. But still, nevertheless, good fun, but just worth pointing that out. Okay, so if you're not into Larry sports cars and stuff, this is like the perfect car for you because it is just friggin' quick in a straight line. It's actually like EV quick, but you still get all of the noises and the excitement of that in line six. Like it is just such a fun car to drive. Um, if you are gonna be a little more serious about driving it faster, probably fit, if you can, a wider set of treads on the rear, maybe something a little stickier, uh, and then that should sort out some of the traction issues. But it is a real smile maker, and, and at the new revised price, I think it is actually really good value for money when you consider what you're getting. You could go get a Model 3 Performance, which is quicker in a straight line, but this is way more fun than a Model 3 Performance, so get that in mind. now. Have you bought one of these? If so, we are mates. Uh, go down to the comment section below. Let me know how it's going. Let me know if you're enjoying it and why you bought that over something like an M3. I'm very keen for your feedback. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and share it with your mates. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But until next time, take it easy.